everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I've got a seminar for you. A lot of you've been asking where or how can you learn from Kama Jiu Jitsu? Well, you can go to one of our seminars and the next one happens to be Saturday, November 11th. It's coming up quick. It's gonna be over at uh, Delaware Jiu Jitsu, which is actually in Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania. And it's run by Professor Joe Goldberg. Give him a call and reserve your spot. It's not a big studio, it's not a big venue. It's gonna run out quick. It's the third or fourth time Professor Dave will be there teaching. So I guarantee you're gonna love this one. You're gonna learn the invisible jiu-jitsu that we do here at Common Jiu-Jitsu. But anyway, give Professor Joel a call and we'll get it started for you. Take care, bye-bye. Hey guys, Ryan Young. Jiu-Jitsu and I wanted to share a story with you about how I had my I guess my full circle coming around full circle moment some of you might have seen this on our website blog but I wrote this years ago but really came down to several years ago while I was still a purple belt I kind of noticed the evolution of jiu-jitsu and I noticed how it was kind of changing and going more from the old style, old traditional style, to the new, as we call it, new school style, competition style. And I noticed how people would do stuff that I never really saw before. Like they would, you know, start to wrap the gi lapel around the arms. Uh, I've seen it done in guard. You know, when you're when somebody's cross eyeing you, they wrap it under you. They play all that type of game. And on the surface of it, I wasn't really into that game because I knew in my in my heart that who would do that in a fight, right? And, and it was it was just kind of counter to the whole premise of jujitsu to me uh, not that it's wrong it was just different and it was very different but at the same time I was conflicted because I think to myself you know this is where jujitsu is going I'm gonna have to learn it you know if I'm gonna be successful I'm gonna have to learn all this kind of stuff so I would try and try and try and I'd learn the new stuff um, I, I all the different techniques and way to do it you know even like the spider guard and all the half guard game you know I learned all that but yet in my mind I, I, in the back of my mind, you know, I think to myself, why do I have to learn this, right? I learned all these these techniques and, uh, you know, my instructor at the time, you know, he kind of learned it as well and go, hey, isn't this cool? Look, you can do this and this and this and this, you know, all this submissions all from this one position, you know, lock your guy down, you know. And I'd say, yeah, I guess it's kind of cool. But in the back of my mind still, mm, nah. It was probably mid 2000s. I was still a purple belt then. I, you know, I was a purple belt for 14 years. And, but I just thought to myself, you know what? The way things are going and all this new stuff that's going on, I'll never get a black belt in jiu-jitsu. And, and, and that's when I just became resigned to being a purple belt and I was fine. I just, you know, I was just trained. It's not a big deal. But I saw a match with Hidon Gracie and this was when he was a brown belt. And everybody would kind of make fun of Hidon Gracie. Not so much that he was no good because he was, but the thing is that nobody really knew how good he was because he didn't get out of the Gracie Academy much. Uh, he would compete in Brazil uh, when Elio was still alive and, and Grandmaster Elio, and he would compete then. In fact, there are stories about him when he was a purple belt, how he would uh, walk out to the mat, uh, Grandmaster Elio would switch his belt out, put a black belt on him, make him compete in a black belt match, and then after the match is over, win or lose, take the belt off, put his purple belt back on, and, and walk off the mat. From what I understand, he won a lot of those matches. But anyway, there is this one other brown belt who's the same size as him. He was trained by a cousin, a Gracie cousin, and was supposedly the next best thing. I mean, he was he was awesome. He was just tearing it up in his local area. He was also about the same age as Hiron. So they had arranged for a super match with uh, the two of them as brown belts. And, you know, I saw the match. And I, unfortunately, you can't pull the match up on YouTube anymore. Maybe somebody deleted it or, or I don't know how to pull it up anymore. But this other teenager, brown belt, doing all the supposed new game and Hiron not knowing any of it, right? He didn't learn it. So. This other one was playing guard on, with Hiron, and Hiron was, was was standing in his guard, and he looked a little a little kind of confused, like you know what is this, and you know his his base was being kind of tested, and it, it took a few minutes, uh, probably I'd say five minutes, you know, in that position, and without Hiron making any progress, but at the same time, this other guy playing guard, he wasn't able to really disrupt Hiron's base or sweep him or or choke or armbar for that matter, and so Hiron was safe. But it just looked like he didn't really know what was going on. Well, what happened was about maybe minute five, minute six, he figured it out. He passed the guard. And once he passed the guard, 
I would say it was no more than 30 seconds, the match was over. He passed the guard, knee in the belly, mount, one hand in a collar, other hand in a collar, choke. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, that's that was pretty good. For somebody who doesn't know the new game, he did just fine. And once he passed this other guy's guard, the other guy had nothing. Like I said, it was done in about 30 seconds. Once he passed that guard, it was over. And Hiron's finishing instincts were, were top notch as a brown belt. So that kind of was one thing that made me think. And another thing that made me think was how Hickson would keep beating people. These people would come from Brazil to, to come into class, you know, you know, they'd come under the premise of, hey, you know, I want to come and learn from Hickson or whatever. But these are champions in Brazil. They're not coming necessarily to learn from Hickson. They're coming to beat Hickson. And none of them did. They would just suppose, you know, even though they're, they're from Brazil, they're learning all the newest techniques and, and, and they couldn't. Right? There is that story about Fabio Grigel who, who used to train with Hickson all the time. When I used to train with, uh, when I was at Hickson school, I would, I would train with one of his uh, brown belts at the time on Sundays, uh, who's actually the older brother of uh, Professor Fernando here at Kama Jiu Jitsu. Um, I used to go to his house and train, and Fabio Grigel, when he was in town to visit and train with Hickson, he would stay with Mauricio. And one time I'd go to Maurice's house on a Sunday and I see Fabio Gagel. Hey, how you doing, right? Fabio Gagel, you know, he's a he's a legend in, in jiu-jitsu now. And he he has created a number of uh, other legends as well, like Leo Vieira, Roberto Traven. So here comes Roberto Traven, comes up with uh, with him to, to visit Hickson, you know, world champion, you know, 200 plus pounder, call him the spider because his because the spider guard and supposedly impassable. Trains with Hickson. And the first time he trains with Hickson, you know, Hickson is a little bit perplexed by it, you know, doesn't really pass it. But they train again the next day and Hickson just blows through it. I guess by then he kind of stewed on it for a while, figured it out and then passed it. And after he did that, choked him. And the rumor was that after he did that, they said, hey, let's go again. And then Hickson said, this time he says, ah, you know, why don't you start mounting on me? I don't know, that, that's a rumor, I wasn't there. Um, but as far as him passing and, you know, blowing through uh, Spider's guard and then beating him, you know, that that's true. Um, but as far as, you know, Hickson then, you know, telling him after they're done, you know, why don't you start mounting on me, you know, I, I don't know if that's the case. I wouldn't doubt it, but that's that's a pretty, you know, if it's true, it's a pretty cool story. After seeing that, uh, you know, knowing that about Hickson and then seeing that match with Hiron, I just told myself, you know what, I don't need to learn all this new stuff. Um, I don't need to learn how to do the leg lasso and, and all that kind of stuff because fundamentals that I was taught included everything I needed to win. It was just a matter of, and this is what I figured out, it's not knowing more moves, it's knowing the important moves and being able to do the important moves at a very high level. It made me realize that I don't need to learn a thousand different things that are always evolving. You know, and they're always changing. They're always adding to it. You know, my, my problem was, I, you know, there's so much that's getting added. I can never learn it all. And, and that's true. You can never learn it all. There's always gonna be something new. There's always a new technique that comes down. But here's the thing. The new techniques are all predicated on having a foundation in an old technique. Now, if you don't have that foundation in the old technique and you learn the new technique, your new technique will only work if your opponent gives you the optimum environment in which to do your new technique. So, here's what I mean. Let's say somebody wants to armbar you from the guard. So they learn all these cool new armbars, but for, for most particular armbars, your posture needs to be broken, which means that you need to be leaning forward on your opponent with your arms separated from your body for them to be successful. And then once you have that situation, there might be 10 different arm bars that a guy can do to you. But if you simply have your base, your base is stable, your posture is up, and, and, and your arms are in tight, there is no arm bar. You can learn 10 different arm bars, or you can, you can work on your guard on how to break base. Because if you can't break his base, you have no arm bar. So the fact that you spent two, three, four, six months learning 10 arm bars will mean absolutely nothing against a partner who has good base. So that, that's the way I thought of it. So I realized, okay, you know what? I need to learn how to break the base. 
right? Now, there's a, there was a video that I did a little while ago. It talked about how Professor Dave and I were training in my garage and how I couldn't even pass his guard, couldn't even open his guard, let alone pass it. But what he was doing was he was just disrupting my base. His ability to disrupt my base was so good, he could have taken my, he could have taken my arms, either arm, um, at will, and he could have choked me, he could have swept me. Which then takes me back to when I was training with him back when, when he was a purple and I was a blue belt. He knew how to do that. So I was always off balance. I had no base, in which, which then would explain why he was able to tap me left, right, left, right, left, right, all the time. You know, he'd tap me, we'd, he'd let me go. We wouldn't really change the position much, but another submission would be waiting, and another, and another. Or he would let me go, and he would just disrupt my base and take the submission again. So Dave didn't learn all that new school stuff then. He knows it now, because he likes to play around with that kind of stuff, but he didn't then. And that's what made him so good, because Hickson drilled in him as well as his other black belts, you know, the black belts that he trained, those concepts over and over and over again. He didn't worry about teaching them 10 different arm bars. He worried about teaching them how to break base. When I think about my coming full circle, it made me realize that I didn't need to learn 10 arm bars. All I needed to learn was one arm bar and how to destroy somebody's base. Because if I could destroy their base, I could get that one arm bar every single time. I didn't need to learn 10 arm bars. That's really where I was going with it. And for those of you who are struggling, saying, how do I learn all this stuff? You don't need to. You just need to know the core fundamental concepts. You may go to a school and they have a fundamentals class. Now, every school, every instructor has a different idea of what fundamental is. For somebody, I, I've, I've seen in a fundamentals class, or somebody's told me about it, how in their white belt fundamentals class, they learn how to do omoplata. They learn how to do leg lasso. They learn how to do barambolo. They learn how to do della riva. Now for them, that's a basic fundamental technique. For us, not so. But you know, everybody's different. So you just need to, I guess, just figure out, or rather than figure out, just do the easy thing and ask your professor. What is a fundamental concept? Why is it fundamental? And then learn it. It's very easy. Going forward, try and think like that. Don't think to the end result. Think about the, about the core concept that enables that end result to happen. Hopefully that helps. I hope you are doing well. And if there's anything that you need, shoot a comment down below or private message us at uh, kamajujitsu at gmail.com or hit us up on the Facebook page. Keep all the comments coming. Keep watching. Subscribe so you can see the next video. Take care. Happy training. Bye-bye.